See the Skara again picking that Gragas. Gragas not being banned out this time, which I don't know if that's surprising. He did chunk down Paradoxical pretty quick in a few occasions. And of course, we see Nunu being picked up. What will I'm a to go go with this time, though? Nice to see they've got the proper names on. Good change. It's a good change. Also, that Gragas in the last game was a really, really good setup for uh, team fights, and they're just going to look to split them up once again. Yeah, and of course, Skana being banned out, so they're saying, we're not having that. You can manage to get... Dominate did play well, and he played, they thought, obviously, he was enough to disrupt them that they've had to force a ban in there, which, of course, has left. You know, and, and Shen's one of those characters. Actually, same with Alistair that we were talking about. Leo. It's up to the blue team to ban it. Uh, the red team, sorry. It seems like it. However, Dignitas thinking Don't. it's more important to ban York than it is Shen. So, really, Crumbs has confidence against Shen. Dignitas has confidence against Shen. Last game, Nidalee does a lot of the same things that Shen does in the ability to just push lane, split push. Dignitas did a really good job corralling Team Dynamic last time. I think they're going to try to do the same thing against Shen, push down towers and just force him to be with the team and not let him split push. Yeah, here's your favorite coming out here. I will dominate, looking like oh he's going to pick up Udia. You're going to be judging yourself against him there, aren't you? You're going to be thinking, I, I could do that better. <laughs> no, I think I'm long past my days of playing at a professional level. I will dominate. I haven't seen him actually play Uder that much. Uder made a bit of a comeback in the European yeah, regional Diamond finals. Yeah, Diamond Fox crushed bit. pretty hard with he him. He plays him pretty tanky, that, though, you were saying, wasn't he? Yeah, full tank Uder, no wits end. He goes double GP10 items into more things. It. And I will dominate just messing with my emotions and <laughs> switching off for a Cho'Gath. Well, Cho'Gath, we've seen coming back into it as well. Snoopy's been mm -hmm. playing Cho'Gath a little bit lately. We saw him in the first game, I believe, of MLG Rally as well here. Right. Uh, and it, it works out very well. You know, that rupture silence he's got, the Feral Scream, really does do a fantastic job. Great bit of crowd control. I'm acute to buy a game, going to be on that edge rail, so <laughs> why not? It worked out so well for him last time. So wouldn't be surprised to see that one locked in. I don't think Team Dynamic are going to be going for the looks picks. here. Those no. are not their picks. They're loving to sit on Lux. Maybe they like to look they, at the he's portrait. Got a ha he's got a happy smile on his face in the distance there. <laughs> Mordekaiser. That would be an interesting one. I remember Mordekaiser in the World Championships Finals didn't work out too well for Skara. No, and they already have Shen and Rumble. So unless mm -hmm. Shen is jungling, then they wouldn't be picking a solo. This is... Now that I'm looking at it, this could be a mid-Rumble if they want to do a Shen top. And they might just end up going with jungler support here or maybe that is they're messing with my brain too much man <laughs> i'm pretty sure they're gonna have a sh shuffle around you know the support definitely will be coming in there probably will be Tarek. they're gonna have the last three seconds to lock them in and it is going to be cassiopeia right. and not mordekaiser in that mid lane which means it is going to be rumble on that top lane which honestly you know it worked out okay for crumbs it wasn't fantastically well but Zion Spartan, I felt, played better with uh, Nidalee, but maybe they just feel when it comes to a team fight, doesn't offer as much. They realized how strong that their pushing potential was, and really, Shen in the jungle doesn't hold as much necessity mm. of split pushing. It's more about yeah. just stopping aggression in a lot of ways, which is good for what Dignitas has been doing. Now Dignitas has this last pick. What are they going to put top lane? Either the Cho'Gath could be a jungle or top lane pick. Most of the Cho'Gath we've seen has been in the jungle. This last pick for Crumbs, probably going to be going up against a Rumble. I'm wondering what Crumbs has in his back pocket here for this matchup. Yeah, I mean, we talked about Rumble being nerfed lately. It's still a very strong champion, though, and was banned out quite regularly during the Gamescom tournament. So they still feel he is very strong, as it is at the moment. There's He's very good against a lot of the standard top laners. So the Aurelia pick, bam, right in there. I think that's a pretty good matchup. If he can get to magic resistance items, if he gets a wit's end onto Aurelia, then he'll be able to match up against Rumble. If he gets behind early, it's going to be trouble. So Shen in the jungle, most likely. Just waiting for Nintendo Dex to uh, switch over with Zion Spartan. That probably will happen. They're just going to delay it on purpose for us, as they always do. Corky versus Ezreal. We saw that last time as well. Yep. And of course, in that middle, though, Cassiopeia versus Gragas could definitely be an interesting switch up. We're going to get things underway here in just a few moments. It is going to be Team Dynamic versus Dignitas. We will be back in just a few moments, guys. I'm currently suffering from a severe traumatic brain injury. I just want to give up so bad, but I can't. I've got to fight on. This is a text message that caused a car accident that changed my life forever.
This year, go big. Champ Sports. We know game. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is Team Tignes House versus Team Dynamic. If you've just joined us, Team Dynamic 1-0 down right there on your screen. The blue team is Team Dynamic this time in the bottom half. So many teams still say it's a big advantage being on the blue side. Let's see if it works out for Team Dynamic. Dignitas, of course, 1-0 up. Crumbs eating a poison straight away from Cassiopeia there. Got to be careful. That barrel's going to roll out. Oh, he's going to walk straight into Ooh. it as well. Shen in the jungle this time around for Nintendo Dex. Nintendo Dex returning to Team Dynamic after an absence at face-off. And you know, it just didn't work out with Atlanta on there. They realized what they were missing. And Nintendo Dex is returning back into that jungle for them. And you see Scara at the moment on Gragas. Gragas has been banned out pretty heavily throughout this tournament. But mm -hmm. Team Dynamic feel they can go up against it. Let's see if it works out here. Big invade from Team Dynamic to start with. Nintendo bringing so much aggression back into Team Dynamic's just play style. Trying to roam around a little bit early. Dignitas not really grouped to fight, mainly looking to defend. They have that one defensive ward down in the bottom river. Aside from that, I'm looking for lots of early ganks from Nintendo on Shen because that's typically their style. In the mid lane, Paradoxical on Cassiopeia, something he used to play a lot more of and we haven't been seeing much of lately. I want to see how that matches up against Gragas. He should have a pretty good advantage on Scar up until the time Scar gets his ultimate. So we're seeing Crumbs going back there. Has he gone for the fourth health point? Yes, he has. This is something we've seen Wookie doing a lot of. A lot of the top lanes pretty much do it as standard as well these days. Mm -hmm. I will dominate starting off on those wolves. He's going to get leashed off. Patoy is going to help him out on the blue buff as well. So pretty standard start this time around there. because the grag ass barrels helping out on the cute pie. They're helping him out pretty heavily, which means he's not going to be using that smite on the blue buff. Probably going to use it across on the red instead. It's no crazy counter junk thing coming out at the start of this game so standard lane setups as well so let's have a look through them from the top to the bottom it is going to be Aurelia up that top lane that's going to be Crumbs this time around and he's going to be against Zion Spawn on Rumble meanwhile in the middle lane it is going to be Skara as Gragas he's going to be up against Paradoxical on Cassiopeia this time Cassiopeia we saw very first game of MLG Rally and that was played very well actually but that was alongside Takashi and Yorick yeah Takashi and with Rayman on Yorick not going to have that Yorick excellent, excellence to help him out this time. Down that bottom lane, you can see it is I'm acute to buy and Patoy. That is the bottom lane for Dignitas on Ezreal and Nunu. And that's going to be against Kulki and Tarek. That standard combo down that bottom lane is going to be Zig versus and Pixel. And Zig actually doing a pretty good job at trying to zone out. Nintendo Ducks, Nintendo X Ducks uh, in the jungle on Shen. Alongside I will dominate for Dignitas on Cho'Gath seeing a return to the jungle in the last few games, which I think actually would make Hotshot GG pretty happy because he, he he farmed crazily with Cho'Gath. It's going to be a oh, push towards aggression. that middle. Paradoxical is going to be the one they're dodging for. It's going to dodge out of the way of that rupture. Is the Ignite going to be enough? They're going to try and tower dive. It's not quite the damage they wanted, though. And if that rupture had landed, that would have been Paradoxical dead. He dodged very nicely, though. Really subtle juke there by Paradoxical. I thought for sure that that rupture was going to be the end of him. The problem with Cassiopeia in some ways and why she's fallen out of favor a bit is you push so hard early game and you want to play so aggressive but junglers have just adapted. They gank much earlier than they used to and that early aggression very frequently gets you killed or at least in a lot of trouble. Paradoxical kind of dodging a bolt there. If he would have lost and given up first blood there it would have been big time trouble. Yeah the flash was used though so we could well see a return from I Will Dominate into that mid lane in a few moments time. Nintendo Dex was there and there it is I Will Dominate right on Q, and that is why Paradoxical is sticking to that bottom right area of the map. He realizes that a Dominate is in that top left. There is a ward in that bush, which would have mm -hmm. given vision just around that uh, Wraith camper area. Well, Wraith's being picked up by Dominate, and you can see that ward just run out just above him there. Paradoxical, though, as you mentioned, in Cassiopeia, he just naturally shoves because you just poison up the whole minion wave and just shove it like crazy. He's just losing out a bit of CS there in that middle lane. As it stands, though, Actually, to be fair, Gragas and Cassiopeia, they're both pretty much heavy lane shovers. They really are. And the thing, the, the big difference is Cassiopeia 
wants to spam all of her spells all the time, so she wants to remain close, more so than Gragas, who wants to throw out his barrel, let it sit, and then can back away. And here comes Nintendo for a gank as well, but see, that's what Gragas has, the Cassiopeia doesn't, that short recharge body slam. Just that body slam, the dash away, and the taunt didn't quite catch on. Pato just throwing that ice blast in the face down the bottom there. We can see Nintendo X, he's just passing straight across the ward though, so it's going to be very much giving Dig and Tass full of full knowledge really of where their jungler is and actually we're seeing that I will dominate is going to try and cut him off here he's going to walk straight into him gets a little bit of feral scream straight across will he manage to land the rupture no Nintendo Dex can get out of the way of that one of course he can just dash and dodge out of the way if he so needs to instead he's just going to stroll on away not got that blue buff yet though did I miss someone taking his run out already okay it's no, five, he got five it right away. In yet. so it's just the uh, initial running out on the timer as it is at the moment though crumbs in that top lane has been pushed heavily. Rumble returning back to lane. Gone straight for Sorcerer's Boots. This is something we just saw Crumbs doing in the last match. Are we going to see the Haunting guys come out? I probably think we will. I think we will as well. That's really more than standard almost at this point for Rumbles. Yes. The only thing is Crumbs farming actually quite well up against Rumble right now. 34 minutes to 27, so not falling behind at all in that lane. Once he gets the wit's end, that's going to be the power spike for Crumbs if he goes for it. I'm expecting him to. Then he'll be able to really match up against Sound Spartan, maybe Phage and then Wits End. I'm definitely expecting him to get a Wits End. If he doesn't, I'll be really surprised. So if you have just joined us, this is the winner bracket quarterfinals, I guess you could say, technically round three. Yep. Semifinals will follow, so process of elimination says it's the quarterfinals. And as it stands, Dignitas 1-0 up. Curse, we've already seen winning. 2-0, to zero, I believe it was the score. Right, they 2-0'd. Yep. 2-0'd Monomaniacs, a.k.a. MTW, formerly just changing changing teams before this event. It's um, changing names. Just Well, it was changing names, but it's changing teams. There's a whole lot of structure behind it, but in, from a spectator That's point true. of view, it's just a name change. There is a hell of a lot more involved for the teams themselves, contract-wise, of course. And as we do approach Season 2 North American Regionals just next weekend, there is a lot up for grabs here. Patoy getting caught out here. It's actually I'm a cutie pie. They want to focus on. They did get the taunt on that. And they are just going to get a couple of shots. But a little bit of split targeting there between Team Dynamics bottom lane. Didn't quite focus on. We are seeing I will dominate going towards this top lane. Heavily pushed up by Rumble at the moment. And Zion Spartan's got to be careful. He's going to be going aggressive on towards Crumbs there. Crumbs trying to bait Whoa. it in, but he might be baiting a little bit too much. And the first blood will come out from Zion Spartan. And I will dominate a little bit too late on that one. And they tried to bait him in as much as they could. Zion Spartan's like, fine, if you're going to sit at the turret, I'm just going to farm with minions between base. So a couple things there. Zion Spartan hit level 6 before Crumbs did, so he knew he was going to be able to go aggressive. Also, Crumbs decided to go for a Heart of Gold and getting just GP10 economy items before going for damage and before trying to get to that wit's end. So he's going to be putting himself behind onto Zion Spartan. He has no magic resist to fight up against the Sorcerer Shoes rush from Zion. So clever. really not matching up that well against him with that build. Yeah, clever play here from Team Dynamic. Obviously realizing I will dominate. Was forced to go up that top there and immediately went fine. We're at seven and a half minutes. We're going to make that play and take the blue buff. Very good play from Team Dynamic there. So now, with that kill also, Paradoxical getting the blue buff advantage onto Skara. That quick shoving of the lane might not be that bad for him at this point if he can keep Skara down. Dominate just hitting level 6. Fairly fast level 6 for Jungle, but Paradoxical being cheeky and taking those races over the wall. Taking them from I will Dominate's face. And you realize, obviously, you mentioned earlier how much Skara loves that blue buff. As it stands, so not going to get it unless you go and invade. Eight and a half minutes gone in this game. Skara up against Paradoxical with his own blue buff. Just going to rub it in his face. And that means Paradoxical can really shove this lane. He can get very aggressive. See, the cooldowns and the mana really helps on Paradoxical. That poison, it just uses next to nothing, really, the poison, the mana-wise. He can just keep spamming it out now. And it's that's all part of the a passive. Problem. It is all part of the passive, indeed. Ziggs, meanwhile, being shoved on towards that turret. I'm a cutie pie. Getting very aggressive. And apparently Dignitas have been mentioning that they really want to try and shove these turrets down as quick as possible. It seems to be their strategy, at least in the last game. Even if it's their strategy, this game, Team Dynamic has a very strong team to defend against that. Rumble is a very shovey laner if he wants to be in top, especially beating up on Crumbs. And it's incredibly difficult to push on a Cassiopeia, let alone one with a blue buff. So even though they may want to shove, they're just not capable right now because they are somewhat losing their lanes. Yeah, as it stands, let's have a look at the bottom lane. Ziggs versus I'm a cutie pie. 79 CS for Ziggs. Well, I'm a cutie pie on 69, so actually a little bit behind, despite the fact that Dignitas have kept that lane shoved the whole time on. And that's going to be Ziggs now with that ulti. He's going to start 
causing problems and start poking Amakuti Pai back with those long range rockets in the face. Even Corky, one of the best wave clearing AD carries you can get, gonna be another thing that makes it even more difficult for Dignitas to pull off that fast push strategy that they did last game. Amakuti Pai, sorry, Scarra being forced back here. Actually, right in the vision of Paradoxical, he's gonna let him go back, but if he goes back, he's gonna cause a lot of damage towards that turret. Paradoxical could push onto this one, they think. Yeah, I was going to say, Skara going back in full vision means they're going to trigger a straight off on that dragon. It's going to get started really off the Citadel. Very smart play, and obviously Paradoxical could just keep that poison pull on top of that dragon. I expect to see uh, Ziggs going to come and help and help there. Pixel is actually just going to slow down a little bit, trying to keep it slightly shaded. Anything, they might try to steal with an Ezreal ult, but that's about all they can do. Chogas a little bit too far away. And no, didn't even try for it. Didn't even try for it. There's the rub try. Will Dominate trying to get in there. Can they cut off anyone here? I don't think they're really in a position. Ziggs is going to take a couple of shots in the face from Ima Cutie Pie, but he's going to turn it around. The aggression straight out towards Ima Cutie Pie. The pe armor penetration coming out as well. Paradoxical doing a fantastic job. I will Dominate nearly catching on there. Meanwhile, Crumbs in that top lane is having problems with Zion Spartan as well. And Zion Spartan again shoving that lane, forcing Ima Cutie Pie to go away. But down the bottom here, Pixel is going to get caught out. The rupture will land. Ziggs is also still in that bush. That's going to be a beautiful Absolute zero is going to force Ziggs to try to get away from it. Scar is surely going to finish him off. I will dominate. He's going to get that nom down on him. And there's going to be the barrel coming out. Pixel will be the last man standing. They did take the armor cutie pie down. Oh, and they got a double kill out of it. The tower doing all the damage. Patoy also taking out very low. And that actually worked out very well in Dignitas' favor. Yeah, in all honesty, that was a fairly sloppy, inefficient gank by Dignitas there. They put all four members down. Scar actually missed one member with his ultimate, which made them sit under the tower for longer to clean up. And they just kind of lost track of how much damage the tower was actually dealing to them. Their two carries taking deaths. Fortunately for them, they only gave the gold onto Tarek, so it's not the worst thing in the world. But still, considering a four-man gank, going for two, v two kills for two in a 4v2, not the best. Not the best indeed. And of course, which way did the buffs go? I'm trying to see where the blue buff actually was picked up there. We did see I will dominate. It was Nintendo Dex and managed to pick that one up. Obviously, he's just taking it from his own jungle. As it is, Ziggs is returning to that lane. 95 CS, building up the, uh, I'm guessing it's going to be 24 CS, just got the phase out there at the moment, along with the Vampiric Scepter, trying to try and keep that lifesteal on. Meanwhile, I'm cute to buy getting caught very aggressively down Ooh. this bottom lane. Zig's going to drive onto him, he's got the Ignite down, the big bomb comes out straight away, taking him down, very nice 1v1 there. And on Ziggs, proving that he actually still has that damage, and of course really the health was lacking. He has gone for the pickaxe and the phage. I'm cute by I think he was caught a little bit off guard, but the mm -hmm. amount of damage coming out, and very nice time with the big bomb there from Ziggs. Well, really, when you're facing up against a Corky who has all of his missiles stacked up, Ezreal cannot deal with that damage heads up, especially if he doesn't lead off with his ultimate in that fight. On top of that, it's an Ignite versus a Cleanse, so there is more damage coming out from Zig just overall. They take that advantage. I'm a cutie pie should not have been trying to duel him there, and Zig did a good job just punishing I'm a cutie pie for his mistake. Yeah, so two. Two and a half thousand gold advantage for Team Dynamic this time. They had the advantage last time, but Dignitas turned it around very nicely. And as it is, we're just that one turret down, along with the Dragon for Team Dynamic, really is that difference in gold. In terms of farm between the two, it's actually pretty even. 80 CS to 110, though, that bottom lane is a big, big difference for Corky, and of course, just getting that kill. Dignitas are going to pick up that blue buff. Scar is going to be a bit more happy this time around. Actually, across the board, all three lanes for Team Dynamic are, have a large Pretty percentage of more mini kills. Yeah. The only place where they have more is I Will Dominate has 82, whereas Nintendo has 54 on Shen. But that's just the nature of jungle Shen. You're all about your ultimate and your presence. From a lane perspective, everyone on Team Dynamic out farming, especially Rumble, due to that build and due to Crumbs going with two GP10 items. He just now got some magic resistant Mercury Treads, but that's nothing. There's no way he can duel or even come close to Zion. Three level advantage on top of having about 30 more minions. Which is a pretty big difference. Zion continuing to farm out. And he's just going to leave that one standard golem there. He's got Nintendo Dex as well, just lingering in the bush. Is it going to be I will dominate the go for? They did ping him down on him. And you can see actually just above, if we pan the camera out, you can see Nintendo I will dominate with that Oracle now on, would be a primary target if they could get onto him. Team Dynamics starting to gather up on this mid lane. He is down to just over under half health. so. Would be an easy target, but Zig is going to return back to that bottom lane. There's a big chunk of farm down mm. there to be had, and that's a lot of gold to be had at the turret. Really much for free. You can see that Ezreal has been pulled away. I'm a cutie pie. Has to be forced to come into that mid lane, and now they're going to see Zig down that bottom lane. I think this is going to react to it. Are they going to try and push this mid lane? They are going to see Nintendo Dex and 
Zion up that top lane. No, they're going to try and go for the gank. Here. They're going to try and go for the bank. Oh, well, Dominate's going to walk straight into that tri bush, and immediately it's actually going to be Zion's spawn that's been caught out. The explosive cast actually knocking him away, but it's not going to be far enough, I think. It's going to get the ice blast in. You can see Pixel trying to get that dazzle down. Not really going to be enough. The ex exhaust went down on Pato. Pato forced to get away, but that's going to be a Cassiopeia. Ultimate goes across the whole of Dignitas, having to cleanse the way out of it. Don't quite have the damage to turn things around. Zig wasn't there to help out, and Nintendo Dex. Didn't want to waste his ultimate on towards Zion there to help out. And Zion just a one kill in the whole fight. Zig, though, is going to be damaging that bottom turret. There's not a lot. You can see Crumbs is going to come around try and force him away. But that's a good bit of damage straight away from Zig. Really strong split push there by Zig while all that was happening in the jungle. Such an odd ward up top by that inner turret that really gave them complete knowledge of where Zion Spartan was and allowed them to run him down. Despite his great flash to dodge the, uh, the Grog Assault, he still got taken down by Dignitas. So good warding and a start of a bit of a comeback for Dignitas because they need to do something to get back in this game where they're losing all three lanes. Yeah, and you can see Nintendo Dex was trying to come around on towards that bottom tower. Ironically, Pixel took a couple of hits from the tower before the minions got in there, just not quite timing it, which meant they had to back off from that tower push. However, Zion Spartan returning back to that top lane, continuing his farm, 110 CS compared to Aurelius 97. Really starting to stack up now. And I'm the to is trying to play catch up in that bottom lane, but he is 40 CS behind on Zig at the moment, as well as a death. And also overall, Dignitas is just very under-leveled. But Toy's level 7 versus the <laughs> Pixel other support being level 9. So just if they do have any kind of fights, like a dragon that's coming up very shortly, it's pretty much going to go to Team Dynamic unless Dignitas has some type of perfect team fight that can peel them off of it. Yeah, and Z Zion Spartan at 12, Paradoxical at 12 as well, compared to 11 and 10. Like you mentioned, Team Dynamic definitely have a big advantage. Paradoxical just picking up the blue buff. He's going to join this mid lane push. Nintendo Dex, Zion, and Pixel all there. You've got Zig just coming around the side there. Are they going to try and go for the gank just after the back of this one? They will pick up a safe turret. Crumbs is off on the top at the moment, so Dragon is just popped, which means Team Dynamic in a much stronger position to fight for this one. I will dominate. I'm not too sure whether Dignitas really want to get involved in this one, just in a 4v5 situation. Brazil and Spartan, of course, two or three levels ahead. I'm acute by that. You can see the damage coming straight out. They are just going to easily fend this one off. The slow coming down there from Paradoxical. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to be able to get through and pick that one up for free. Completely and conceding that dragon. Crumbs trying to get a tower up top lane. Got that recurve bow. The long way of getting to a wit's end. If he gets that, he will start to become useful. But really, Dignitas so far behind right now, they have to actually just avoid Team Dynamic until they can get back and play some catch-up. They are behind in level, behind on farm, behind in gold, behind on towers. That mm. would suggest Team Dynamic they might be behind. have a big advantage over Dignitas here. Bone in mind, Dynamic themselves on 1-0 behind. They must pick up this game and take it to a third game series. Actually, we've, we've been pretty lucky here on the mainstream, on the red stream. We've had a lot of three game series so far. Picking the matches, I think, correctly, Picking as opposed to competitive games. what some members of Twitter and Reddit would suggest. We have managed to pick out the best game so far, I feel, as it is. It is the casters that pick these games, by the way. He, You're just so setting us up to get crushed I next time we have up. a bad game, that's, man. That's perfectly fine, but you know we're doing all right because we've got two winner bracket back-to-back -back and then two loser bracket back-to-back, -back, so we can't really go wrong. This is true. Yeah, we've got every game streamed from now on in, I think. So it, whether, whether oh, it be on red or blue. Paradoxically, he's going to get the ultimate on towards Scar. Scar's taking a lot of damage there. He has going to use the explosive cast to try and knock them back. Dazzle's going to come out there, but I think he's going to be enough to escape. Rupture, though, onto Pixel. Could they turn this one around? Feral Scream goes across. They are just going to back away from that fight. Scar is in no position to fight Zion Spartan. Popping that ultimate just across the backside of Scar. Had to back off that. The rest of Team Dynamic are going to come around. I will dominate. Needs to be careful because they are huddled very close to his position there with that. Oracle on, he would be a prime target, a big meaty target at that. I will dominate, stomping around, but blue buff is going to get taken away. It was paradoxical that picked it up, and that's going to be Team Dynamic backing away there. And that's always the danger when you face chicken those bushes with mm -hmm. a Cassiopeia on the opposition. So good. That ultimate, if you're facing it, you get stunned. If you're not, you get just slowed. So it's so advantageous to just wait in the brushes as Cassio more so than other champions. Team Dynamic overall, really really efficient at just getting leads and then sticking with them they struggle when they're in really close games or when they need to come back from something but every situation i've seen from team dynamic where they're ahead like this they're usually able to close it out now team Dynamic toss much more experienced much more capable of coming back than the previous things team dynamic has played against in this tournament still though 
Team Dynamic looking really strong, and this is what they're good at. Yeah, so Scarra going straight for the Death Fire Grasp this time around, apart, uh, as opposed to the De Rabadon's mm -hmm. Death Cap he went last time. Is that purely down to the farm that he's not quite getting there, or does he feel he needs to chunk down the Nintendo decks quickly with that Death Fire Grasp? I actually feel it's more about the Abyssal Scepter when he's up against a Cassiopeia. Mm -hmm. Cassiopeia really wants to all-in him very much so, and if he didn't have that Negatron Cloak when he face-checked that bush, he definitely would yes. have died. He had to go a slightly more defensive build just because of how aggressive his opponent was. Yeah, he's got a choice of both at the moment. Which way is going to go? And, wow, Team Dynamic trying to start off on the they Baron They were talking here. about last game that they tried to push too hard for Baron. They might end up Baron. doing this again, yeah, and they're just going to back right off. Roll out the barrel from Scar. It's going to force them back. And like you say, a, you've got to be careful. They have this advantage. They have a good advantage right now, but they can't start tunnel vision. Oh, paradoxical caught out by the rupture there. I would dominate. Thought about going in with that Fell Scream. Maybe trying to silence them out, trying to keep them away. Nintendo Dex, meanwhile, with that Oracle taking out those Baron. But uh, I mean, 20 minute Baron is a little bit of a dangerous play when they have they have a good advantage, but it's mm -hmm. not that clear an advantage just yet. It's a really big advantage, but at the same time, they do need to convert something ever so slowly. Crumbs is coming back in this top lane. Mm -hmm. He got crushed by Rumble earlier, but now you look at the minion kills, he's only four behind, and it gave him a disadvantage early, getting that harder golden Philosopher's Stone, but those things are ticking up. They're generating more and more gold. He's going to get his farm back, and it's just a matter of time until Dignitas is again on even ground with Team Dynamic. If they don't do something, the Baron was an attempt at that, just probably not the right one. So there's the Abyssal Scepter being picked up by Scar. And meanwhile, Rabinon's death cap has been completed by Paradoxical. So advantage, I would guess you could say Paradoxical. Certainly mm -hmm. outfarmed Scar up by 50 CS, which is a pretty huge thing compared to when you realize it is Scara. It is the really man of, big. The man of farm. That is a big, big advantage. I would dominate clearing out these wards. Zig's trying to do a bit of damage to one side. I will dominate that. Just guesstimating his position. I will dominate actually triggering off on the Baron as well. Right. Team Dynamic, they have got this Baron pushed out here. Are they going to start things? Of course, the Nintendo decks could join them. They realize that Crumbs is down that bottom lane. Crumbs doesn't have a teleport. Can't get him. Actually, does have, does teleport, have teleport up teleport. at the moment. It is available, so he could join that fight alongside Nintendo decks. Nintendo decks just backing off. And Team Dynamic leashing away again. Not going to start on it. Instead, they're going to pick up that blue buff, but it is keeping Dingtas hovering in that area. I don't think they realize that Nunu was not there, Patoy. So they could have pushed a 4-on-5 advantage, certainly not for too long, but they could have pushed that advantage. As it stands, it is going to be a complete face-off, and neither is the team. Again, Team Dynamic starting on the Baron. Are Dignitas in position? Do they have the wards? Can they have any vision of this? They do not at the moment. They're going to poke in and see something, though, and that's just going to flip a switch. They're scared to go in there. Zion Spartan's keeping them away. If you just look down the bottom there, Zion Spartan is just off, off the screen, just down nice. the bottom line. There's the Baron picked up. It is going to be Nintendo Dex, but Zion Spartan was doing guard duty standing on that point, acting as a, a moving ward. That was really, you know, they went for it, and that's a 22-minute Baron for Team Dynamic trying to convert something big. Very risky Massive doing Baron against the Gragas. We saw earlier, Gragas is the one of the best Baron stealers in the game, so risky play by Team Dynamic, but a calculated one able to convert that kill. Yeah, they're all actually going to back off. They have a massive creep wave on the top they could have pushed in. At least they can now one in a turn. Instead, they've decided to back off. Zion Spine had to cut off Crumbs' attack down that bottom lane, pushing on towards the turret. Did take down the turret themselves, so three on one. First turret for Dignitas on that bottom lane. But Team Dynamic just getting that little bit of extra gold. They have that Baron. They just need to make sure they fought so hard for it. You know, they make sure they convert it into something, picking up that 22-minute Baron. Dignitas, again, just picking up a lot of farm off the back of this, this little free farm mm -hmm. session they're getting. That 3,500 gold advantage has been at the same point for quite a while now, so Dignitas has really stopped the bleeding from a gold perspective. It's now a matter of team dynamic with the Baron making it count because they're not able to increase their gold lead. They really just have to start getting the towers, getting more kills, and really just converting on the advantage because they haven't really done much of it in the past 15 minutes or so aside from this Baron buff that they need to capitalize on. So again, you can just see how quickly that mid-wave does get cleared out. And that was just by I will dominate the Scarlet. Those barrels will wipe out those waves, no problem at the moment. Doing a lot of the damage. Zeke taking unnecessary damage from the turret there, if anything. Not too sure what is point of getting that a little bit too close. Barrel just sticking around there, of course. Scar is going to let it rot away. Oh, Zigzag Zion Spartan's been caught out by a slow. They actually flashed away. He may well get caught out. The explosive cast could go out. He's going to surely get dropped. Zion Spartan around the side there, just simply caught out of position. Meanwhile, Team Dynamic are taking the bottom turret down, and they are going to try and force the advantage here, but that was one Baron up hero taken down very easily, caught completely out of position.
This is really a bit of a role reversal from last game, where Dignitas were the ones taking all the towers, and Team Dynamic was the ones kind of staying close in gold and not really seeming to have control of the game. And in this game, it's just completely the other direction as Team Dynamic goes down and takes another dragon. Yeah, it's going to give another gold advantage. So they're taking that turret and a dragon, giving them another plus 2,000 gold over them, turning it into a 5k advantage. 4-4 four, four still the kills, so very even in the kills, but the turrets obviously are the big difference currently for Dynamic. It's also converting themselves into quite a few items. The farm is quite a big advantage as well in the lanes. 197 to 186, so that was a 40 CS difference at one point. It's down to 10 CS now. I'm a cute is really playing catch-up very well on Zig. He really is just waiting until he gets that Infinity Edge. I'm a cutie pie just needs to go back to base in order to buy it, and then he'll be at pretty much the same strength as Zig. Overall, the rest of the items, there is an Aura item on Dignitas. They have an Aegis of the Legion, whereas Team Dynamic is yet to complete one. Shen has been working on it with those three components, but it's not there yet. So once the Baron buff falls, Dignitas does have a strong team fighting team. People always underestimate Cho'Gath. It's all about Three second AoE silence, if you land it on the right target, can be absolutely devastating and make up for any disadvantage you may have accrued throughout the game. Yeah, Scarra trying to get a quick burst on towards Zig there. Paradoxical though, just about rejoining at the same right time. I think he may well have gone for Zig if uh, Paradoxical hadn't just shown up there. Dashing through from the Wraiths. Paradoxical throwing that poison out, leaving that barrel there. And going to slam, actually Scarra not quite taking <laughs> it down. And then we see... Team Dynamic, can they push on? That's going to be a rupture actually landing on Paradoxical there. Forced him away. Feral Scream as well came in. And as it is at the moment, Zig trying to get that little bit of poke. But you can see Team Dynamic continuing the split push that they've done before. Trying to take down both inner turrets at the same time. They've got Shen along the bottom as well. Nintendo Dex just slowly but surely split pushing away that bottom lane. Team Dynamic need to be careful they don't get split out a little bit too much here. And that Baron buff now run out. Team Dynamic losing that advantage. And so, you know, all that work they did for that Baron buff, they've really not made use of it. They did get the one tower, but that's about it. If they get the second one here, this would still count because they got a lot of work towards that with the Baron buff. They made, I'd say, enough. They were very conservative with what they were trying to do with the Baron buff. No tower dives. They really just tried to use it to farm the lanes and then just make the game longer. Nothing super crazy coming up by Team Dynamic there. Yeah, but as it is... At the moment, I wouldn't want the game to go longer. I wouldn't want that Cho'Gath or Aurelia to start getting crazy strong, which will happen. They're going to take this top inner turret down, though. And that will be the final inner turret as well. So all the turrets now gone. Team Dynamic with that 6-1 advantage. Dignitas as it is. Ezreal starting to get that Infinity Edge completed. He's got the Trinity Forces, the next target I would expect. Just going to start doing a hell of a lot of damage. I would say he's surpassed Corky right now in damage especially when you factor in the fact that Patoy has Blood Boil and gives him increased attack speed on that. So normally you need attack speed and to combo in with your Infinity Edge in your items, so that's why people have Zeals and Trinity, and uh, sorry, Zeals, Trinity Forces, and Phantom Dances mm -hmm. that they combo, but he has a new new, so that's pretty much enough. And he's got an Agility Pot on as well, I think. Yeah, you can see yeah, Agility Pot yep, as there well, it is. so a lot of attack speed. As it is at the moment, Dignitas definitely clawing their way back into this game. Team Dynamic need to turn that advantage. And we talk about, I talk about this so often, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but the big difference between the very top teams and the good teams is how much they take advantage of, of the clear advantage they had early mm -hmm. on. And as it is, Team Dynamic are doing a very slow job of it. It's normally one of the things that they are best at. They generally close out games very, very quickly. It's just so hard to push on Dignitas right mm -hmm. now. Cho'Gath and Gragas just obliterate the way before it gets well, the there, and they see an advantage, they're going in for a fight. Yeah, they're going straight towards Pixel, actually Crumbs oh, tried not. to get in there, wasn't quite enough, didn't feel they closed the distance enough, Shirelius was popped there, Bio will dominate, but they didn't close it down enough, the ping goes down on the middle turret from Team Dynamic, so Team Dynamic going to turn their advantage on towards that mid turret, see if they can push it down, Zig didn't really get any shots off on it though, that's going to be a rupture, he actually landed on towards Zig, they didn't pull anything from it, Zion Spartan just off at the side, they're overheating actually, Trying to get a little bit of poke on towards Ami Cutie Pie and a game forced away. But while this is all happening, Shen is quite happily split pushing. He's getting actually a fair bit of farm there. Sunfire Cape, Aegis of the Legion, and also another elixir for himself. So when he does get an adversary finally for a split push, if Crumbs comes down for him, he might actually be able to stand with him just because he spent so much time alone farming while the rest of the team split pushes with him. So Scarlet maybe will pick up a, his own blue buff for once here. Not too sure how many of these he's been able to get, but he will be happy with that. He's going to keep the cooldowns and the mana obviously on him. 
as it is paradoxical with the blue buff is his own they're just hoping they can catch somebody out but as it is nobody's been foolish enough to go wandering baron is Ooh. up which is why they're starting to walk towards it i will dominate actually walking straight through that ward he'll be aware of that because he's got a uh, oracle on but he was more more focused on trying to get that ward down of his own and dignitas uh, actually fairly poorly under leveled here scara is 15 I'm a cutie pie is 15, so they don't have level 3 of their ultimates yet, yet Paradoxical and Zion Spartan are 17, so they have max alts. That will make a big difference if there's a team fight that breaks out here. Paradoxical just getting slightly caught out there. Lack of wards over Dignitas, they've got nothing to stick in that pit right now. So Team Dynamic actually could pick this one up. You can see the rupture coming down, they're trying to use the vision I will dominate can get from that and just cause them problems. There's the Ezreal ulti, that shows, that's going to surely prove to Team Dynamic. They have got no vision of this. When they're flashing those Ezreal ultimates across, the Team Dynamic right are going to start back on towards the Baron here. I think they realize it, the rupture keeps coming through. They are well aware of the fact there's absolutely no vision. I think we might see a blind flash from I will dominate. He does come in, he got the steal, no! no. Not did. quite enough! Team Dynamic managed to pick it up. That's going to be a quick kill, and immediately Baron goes down, and Dignitas now forced to back away from this one very quickly. Are going to try and take the red buff down. That seems a little crazy to try and pick up that red buff as desperation. Team Dynamic are going to continue pushing on. They've realized it. They managed to ping onto them. Can they catch on towards Scar? No, they're going to turn things around, though. I will dominate down. That big Cho'Gath dinosaur in mid is going to be a big advantage, and Team Dynamic are going to try and surely turn this into an inhibitor. They will be able to take it down. They're chunking that turret down straight away. You can see Zig getting all the shots. No problem there. That's going to be a free turret and going to turn it into an inhibitor. I don't think Dignitas can even get close to... No, they can't even get... Zion Spartan, again, running pure in destruction now and just keeping them all at bay. That was a really risky play by Team Dynamic. Dignitas jumped in there. The Grog Assault hit. The Feast hit from Cho'Gath. I will dominate you to smite. And amin amongst all the chaos, Paradoxical got the Baron with a dot from Cassiopeia. So, <laughs> so lucky and such a dangerous play by Team Dynamic. Lucky that they didn't get that Baron stolen, in all honesty. Very, very lucky indeed. Because, I mean, the, the, the feast itself is a thousand damage, I believe it is, straight on towards there, and you can smite follow them straight up for it. There they can really chunk it down. Dragon picked up, though, by Team Dynamic, and a big, big advantage for Team Dynamic now. They have the 9k gold difference. That's big. 5 4 up, just one kill advantage, but 6 7 1 in turrets, in fact. And Team Dynamic. Are they going to convert this? Now they have that big Baron advantage. They have the item advantage as well. You can see Corky completing that Infinity Edge along with the Trinity Force. He is much stronger than Corky, uh, uh, Ezreal, sorry, right now. So I'm a cutie pie. Despite the fact he had that tiniest little advantage, has fell way behind. Despite the fact that Blood Boy will help him out a bit when it comes to fights. But as it is, the ability power, I think, between Paradoxical and Skara, I think, will be pretty big. Skara actually mm -hmm. choosing to go towards the Rabadon's Death Cap following that Abyssal Scepter but he's only at 274 ability power compared to Paradoxical, who is over 500. 554. Yeah, that is a huge, huge difference. And really, just looking at the scoreboard and the tower kills, it's very clear what Team Dynamics' objectives were this game. Pushing and towers. They have yeah. seven tower kills and only five player kills on top of all the Baron buffs. So really, that is just total push power and really not caring that much about killing actually Team Dignitas. So, we have seen Zig pushing that top lane. In fact, Team Dynamic shoving all the lanes, really. Shen down that bottom is just lingering and waiting. He was sat in the tri bush, hoping that somebody would come and maybe have a little look there, seeing if he could bait crumbs in towards it. Not going to happen, though. And Zig is going to continue shoving on. But there is those barrels again. And you can see Dignitas doing a very good job of just clearing the ways. There's not a lot I can do about it, which is why this split push is on. You can see down that bottom lane, Nintendo Dex slowly but surely creeping in. And Team Dynamic hoping they can pick something out from this one, or if anything, force Crumbs to go down that bottom, because that bottom turret is now going to get minions shoving on towards it. Nintendo Dex is there, and that's going to cause something to happen. Mid lane also is being pushed, and again, you can see they're causing problems. Nintendo Dex slowly but surely is taking away that bottom. The bottom turret down half health already. Nintendo Dex doing really a lot of damage to this one, and that's surely going to cause a problem. Crumbs is going to come down. Is it going to cause a fight in the top lane? You can see Nintendo Dex now getting dived on by Crumbs there. It's going to force him away. He did manage to take down about two-thirds of the health on that turret, though, so that is really everything everything done. That's all they need to do, just keep mm -hmm. shoving that lane. And he's just going to follow in that creep wave again. Crumbs has had to return back to this middle because the super minions are starting to creep their way in there, which is opening up things. Nintendo Dex just returns back to the lane quite happily. And now the top lane turret's going to get chunked down, down about two thirds health straight away. Nintendo Dex actually getting dived on by Crumbs here. Crumbs forcing him away there again. 
And Nintendo Dex causing all the problems, but that they is going to be turret. that is going to be the turret going down to minions because Crumbs instead focused on trying to get the damage on them, and that's going to be an open inhibitor. And you can see immediately Team Dynamic saying, "Fine, open inhibitor, we'll have some of that." Now they're just all moving towards that. They know it's down. They just lost the Baron buff, however, so it would be a somewhat dangerous fight. They might just end up backing away. I'm not sure if Dignitas is going to choose to defense this because they have a slight chance of being able to. Well, ironically, they've all rotated round, and now Nintendo Dex is pushing the top lane. <laughs> so they're like, fine, we'll just keep on that split push. They don't want to engage in a 4v5. Zion Spartan did get caught out by a rupture there, but it wasn't enough to follow up on it because they have to deal with it. Crumbs again going up towards that top, causing problems. Nintendo Dex, they are going to catch on towards Paradoxical this time, though. That's going to be Paradoxical. Surely dropping Feral Scream is enough. Here comes Shen Ultimate in there. I will dominate, taking down very low. Zion Spartan. Spartan gets dropped eventually. I will dominate. It's going to back away. Paradoxical wasn't quite taken down as well. Inhibitors still open there. Shen Ultimate coming in just about to survive, though. And it is a four on four. Sorry, actually, well, effectively, because I will dominate. Can't get involved. That poison tick nearly oh. taking him down. That's going to be Ziggs catching on to Crumbs. I'm going to keep as well. The big bomb comes out. Pick Zig will manage to take him down. That's going to be the inhibitor taken down. Team Dynamic, can they take this one home? A nice turn there by Team Dynamic. I thought they had the inhibitor successfully defensed because I'm a cutie pie had gotten away with the sliver, but then Dignitas just got a little greedy, oh, stuck around a bit too long, and lost their second inhibitor. Nintendo Dex caught out by the rupture there, but still not enough. They've got super minions coming Here in towards go. this middle turret. On towards the Nexus, I think Zig should be able to help take this one down pretty quickly. On towards the next Nexus turret, I think Dignitas are going to have to commit here. They do manage to cast Paradoxical out. They get the Feral Scream across him. There's the barrel. That's going to be Scarra getting one kill. Chasing, they're Zig, the Nexus, though. takes the turret down, and the Nexus is down to a third health already. Pixel's going to get caught out. The rupture will be available in a moment. Shirelli's Reverie just getting popped there. Who will they focus on? I will dominate. Surely going to get taken down. Does manage to get the rupture down. Just before he dies there, Zig doing all the damage on towards Scarra. Zig's going to try and chunk him down. They just need to turn their attention on towards the Nexus. And Team Dynamic should be able to take this one down. Nintendo Dex is there doing the damage. Actually they flashing through, Nintendo Dex is going to go down. But Team Dynamic pick up the kill. And that is going to be 1-1 one, one, all square. And another fantastic game here. Team Dynamic really slowly but surely taking that advantage. It took the time about it, but they managed to make it count. Who kill, killing all 11 towers in that game and only 8 player kills but that's not to say it wasn't a pretty high action game so much forcing so much movement and really just not letting Dignitas come back and finishing off a game where they had to leap the entire game